Welcome back, Hive Mind. This is Shalazar with Hive Mind Gaming coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video. All right, this morning we had 2.2 drop. Uh, now everyone's been waiting, and of course I wake up to uh, message after message after message on their Discord server saying, "Sorry, we understand that there's issues. We're reloading." Sorry, we understand that there's issues, we're reloading. Again, another patch comes out, and again, everything's screwed up. But, let's go over some highlights. I mean, there's so much, there was three messages that came through. Uh, the f these two here were f are just about the updates to the champion rebalance which we're going to go over in a different uh, a different video but uh, here we've got the the breakdown of the stuff that uh, is coming in first off is the artifact forge uh, we've got uh, as you can see in the center of your town we no longer have that campfire it's actually the forge and for the forge you can get the materials through there's four different types of materials there's the uh, Magisteel, uh, and you can get the you get those from Classic Arena. As you, uh, I'm not sure if it's when you're doing. Cla well, how about as you can see right here, you get the items after you actually fight the competent in the uh, fight the battle. So it's not like you have to. Uh, wait till the end of the day or the end of reset when uh, or the end of the week I should say when you get your box it you actually get the the components as soon as the battle finishes so you get that with your with your coins when you're fighting in arena so that's kind of cool I dig that all right next is your soul stones uh, you get you get those uh, rare epic and legendaries all from frack from faction war battles so as you can see here it actually shows you on your faction wars uh, where you actually get the the uh, the glyphs and then right next to it it also shows you the components you get as well so that's actually kind of neat so that you'll get those uh, immediately and it shows you uh, what types you get unfortunately I, what I don't like so, oh, okay, if you mouse over it, uh, it does say epic and legendary rare, okay. Rare and epic. So stage 10 is where you stop, uh, you stop seeing the, ep or the uh, rares, and then you start seeing the legendaries, and that makes sense, okay. And then you start seeing the, the legendaries at stage 13. And then all the way up until the end. That's a little annoying. I think if you're going to farm stage 21, it should be legendaries only. But that's just my opinion. Alright, so here we are. We finished our Crips 20. And we got 16 of the legendary Bloodstone. So, actually kind of neat. Alright, as well as our Glyph as we normally do. All right, so next we have our blood, our, well, that was our Bloodstones and Soulstones. So I guess you get both of those from Faction Wars, uh, Soulstones and, and uh, Bloodstones. And then uh, we've got the Core Hammers. The, you get Legendary only, and you get those from tournaments. So for instance, we, uh, looks like we've got a new way of setting these up. And that's kind of interesting. I like the way I like the new uh, way they've got this looking here on the side, and then looks like all the way to level 20. When you're level 20, you can get 10 uh, substat charms, and then all the way up to level three, where you get 20. Uh, one the place if you place one through three, you get 20. And then you get a rarity charm uh, on for second and third, and then for first you can get a 
looks like a rank charm. So looks like uh, that's I don't think I like that that the only way to get them is first place in a tournament. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Tell me tell me what you guys think in the comments. Yeah, it looks like all they're going to have is just one, one, two, three, place, placing one, two, and three. So I kind of like the idea that you can get them in your rewards as well. And this is the old tournament, so yeah. So interesting. Um, I kind of, kind of like it. It's it's interesting. I don't like the, I don't like the the fact that you can only get the get the uh, the good ones in by placing one, two, and three in the tournament. So, so that's pretty much the forge. Let's actually take a look at the forge. So, looks like they're actually giving us some to start off with some materials so that you can actually play with the forge so if there's a set that you actually uh, like then you can actually go ahead and make a piece just to see what it what it's like now I would probably suggest waiting until you get some of those uh, pieces that go here which give you the ability to uh, get a better chance at, at the substats that you actually want. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and make a piece just so we can see. So we got a deflection helmet and looks like it. Yeah, I, I dig it. I can, I can, I can get behind that. That's kind of neat. And it gives you the chance to sell it immediately. Uh, that's a nice, quality of life thing so if you want to make us a, a lower version of it then it a four or five star ch chance for a four or five star it's less materials but if you want to do the five or six star then it's more materials so that's kind of neat I like it I can I can get behind that and then if you click that it gives you the actual um, crafting odds. So this is my first time looking at all this, so this is kind of neat. So the odds for rank 3 or 4. Nice. Default default odds with rank charm. So the rank so the rank charm is basically to get it to a higher rank. So if you put a if you choose the the larger one the five or six and you put a rank charm in here I assume it's this one with the chevron because that makes sense um, or it could be that too who knows anyway it would make sense with the chevron for ranks uh, but anyway uh, if you put it in there it you would have a better chance at a six star I, w I can only assume so yeah kind of interesting tell me in the comments what you guys think about the new artifact system all right so right here it tells us what the charms are so we've got the uh, rank charms increases your chance of getting the highest rank available in the selected range okay so we got that right the rarity charms increases your chance of getting higher rarity so your rare epic or legendary uh, type charms increases your chance of getting a specific type of artifact which is your your weapon boots uh, etc and then your sub sub stat charms increases your chance of getting an artifact with a specific substat okay makes sense um, I'm surprising there's not one in here for gloves gloves chest boots to get a specific um, primary stat but I mean they would have to I don't know how they would do that since it's random which of the six you get. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, and then, of course, there's the four artifact sets. And then um, you got the two original that are from Platinum 
arena and then they've got the, the two new sets so the four that they're starting out with is the resilience which is plus 10 percent to hp and defense and then the perception which is plus 40 accuracy plus five speed and then the deflection set which is plus 20 to hp and defense and that with a 25 chance to deflect one debuff on uh, onto the attacker uh and then you got the swift parry which is a 18 percent speed and then 30 percent crit damage with a 50 percent 50 percent chance of unkillable when hit with fatal hit occurs once per round uh, now keep in mind these are four piece sets where these are only two piece sets so kind of nice I, I like the idea that you can you can actually farm those items to get those pieces I like that uh, and then we've got the advanced quests all right so the advanced quests which we've talked about before in another video so you've got your bar up here that once you complete 50 you get a three-day XP boost once you complete 100 you get a five-star chicken and once you click complete 150 of them you get a epic tome and 250 you get a legendary tome once you complete 250 and you click all your rewards it will reset and start over again so basically you're gonna be able to farm these books by farming these advanced quests now there are a certain amount of these quests that are permanent quests that you will see the whole time and then there's a few that will be random each time that they will they will be rotated out so I do like the fact that we're gonna be able to get some of these uh, charms as rewards the rewards aren't great guys but I mean it's free stuff I mean we can't really complain about free stuff well I guess I guess some people can I guess I mean yeah okay it's not a lot to get a greater <laughs> affinity potion but whatever who cares it's it's not about these these rewards it's more about these rewards right so yeah so this is basically what we want to uh, work on is these uh, quests that way and they will reset at normal reset time at least that's what they said so yeah I think I think that's uh, uh, yeah ah, crap I wish I would have seen that before oh well that's all right all right so the next thing is champions and battle fixes there is a new legendary champion, which is Sato, uh, and they are in Undead Hordes. Let's go take a look. Might be easier just to... Oh, he looks cool. Undead Samurai. Hmm, is this an intro to the, to the actual uh, samurai clan that's actually coming out? got a new faction uh, supposedly a new samurai faction in the uh, in the works maybe this is uh, a a look of that a, a, a intro to that maybe he looks pretty badass though I dig the swords I dig the look I, I think that is that is sweet that is absolutely sweet all right, so base HP is pretty good. Base defense is pretty good for an attack champion. Base speed is good. Yeah, so his base stats look pretty good. He is an attack champion. He is magic affinity because, you know, we don't have enough of those. Um, let's see. So his A1 is attacks one enemy two times, has a 50% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns after the first hit. So only the second attack gets gets the 50% chance, which books up to 60%. Places an extra hit if the decreased defense debuff is placed. Okay, interesting. And then his A2 is attacks one enemy before attacking, places a 50% increased attack buff and a 30% increased crit damage buff 
on this champion for two turns if this champion's defense is higher than the target's defense. Decreases the cooldown of this skill by one turn if the target has more than 50% HP after the attack. Okay, so interesting. Um, it's not going to be good against bosses, obviously, because of the the defense. Huh, I don't know. I'm not sure. That's interesting. Uh, book's down to a three-turn cooldown. And then could be two turns depending on how everything works or how the HP of the opponent is because so against a boss it won't get it won't get the this champion for two turns if this champion's defense is higher than the targets defense so it's probably not going to place these debuffs or these buffs on him against a boss because his defense is not going to be higher but if the boss you're fighting is over 50% when he attacks this now becomes a two turn cooldown so I wonder what the uh, what the damage multiplier is for this attack because if it's if it's stronger than this attack then yeah I mean two turn cooldown could be cool against bosses I don't know let's see what the rest of his kit looks like alright so attacks one enemy then attacks all enemies except the initial target if there are three or more enemies alive inflicts 20 percent more damage on the first hit if the target has higher max HP than this champion okay interesting so might be good against it, it's definitely not a Rotos killer because it doesn't hit the, the, the original target twice. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good against Rotos, but it'd be good against. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about this guy. Let's check out his passive. His passive is will ignore seven point five percent of enemy defense for each time this champion attacks the same target in consecutive attacks or turns stacks up to 30 percent the stack will be lost and reset if this champions champion targets and attacks a different enemy huh that's enemy that enemy that's interesting uh i mean i could it's, now i could see where he'd be good in clan boss Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. That's. I mean, I don't know. I. It's. I guess I'm gonna have to do some thinking on that one. I mean, he seems like he should be. I bet there's gonna be somewhere that someone's gonna figure out where he's gonna be perfect. Um. I mean that that passive is really good, but you can't target anyone. So I wonder if things like counterattack or you know uh, taunt will throw him off of that, will reset his passive. Hmm, that's a good question. So, so that's something we definitely it, that definitely needs to be figured out whether or not taunt and. Because taunt would be a good way to to slow him down if you're facing him. Where where counter attack could also screw up things, so uh, you couldn't have a counter attacker on your team. I don't know. That's interesting, and you'd have to uh, steer away from the masteries that allow him to counter attack in the defensive tree. But anyway, um, we'll move on. All right, so next we have multiple AI fixes and updates. Uh, Day's buff is now indicated uh, on the Minotaur after the Rage buff expires. Uh, fixed a bug that caused Rotos uh, his faded destruction uh, skill to deal more damage, so they fixed that. 
uh, fix the bug that caused spiderlings to spawn on top of one another. I've never seen that happen, but funny. Uh, Cantras, the Cyclone, no escape skill now decreases enemy uh, e decreases each enemy's accuracy for each debuff they are under. Uh, healing visual effects are now shown correctly when she heals with her no escape. Uh, fix the bug that caused buffs and debuffs not to be displayed after reviving Daywalker. Uh, fix the bug that caused Arbiter's Destiny Call to incorrectly fill all allies' turn meter. Added pop-up text for when the transfer debuff effect uh, activates. Okay, that's good. Optimized champion and dungeon battles to make replaying stages smoother. The lasting gifts mastery now extends the duration of buffs cast by Cillian the Lucky's Charm Life. Nice. I love Cillian. I don't know why everyone hates him. I do know why, but I still love him. He's he's so much fun in, in arenas to one to just lock people out. It's just great. Uh, he, he's fun to play. He's not is he tournament or is he uh, platinum viable? Not at all. Not at all. But he's fun in 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 gold four. That's for sure. Um, all right. Fixed how the HP burn debuff is displayed visually when placing another HP burn debuff while one is already active. Okay, that's kind of neat. Uh, added animations to dwarves in the collection, index, and lots of other places. Okay. So they don't just do the one step forward and throw their hands up in their fists up in the air like they just don't care. Alright, uh, next is game experience enhancements. Uh, let's see, iOS devices no longer supported, that sucks, iPhone 5 and below. The, the enable notifications achievement now completes correctly on iOS, updates, updated how ban reasons are shown to the recipient, fixed an error that occurred when switching tabs in the portal, okay. Fixed an error that occurred when quitting a tag team arena series. I've never had that issue, but I've never uh, quit, I guess. Fixed the banned and obscured obsc obscene words filter. Fixed the display of gold bars in the battle result windows after changing tier. Now you'll receive a warning pop-up after purchasing champion fragments in your inbox, if your inbox is full. Okay. The red dot indicator in the artifact storage will now d disappear after viewing new accessories. Thank God, that was so annoying. Fixed a background display bug that occurred when switching between tabs in the portal. Okay. Fixed how long nicknames are displayed in the classic arena battle tab added sounds when claiming event award rewards okay well, I, I keep my sound turned off anyway so doesn't affect me uh, now the tag team arena result screen won't display above the quit menu when closing the game down between the battles fixed how gifts are displayed Tournament challenge rules are now shown in the main tournament interface and added a new animation for summoning champions from fragments and then added ranks of the possible accessories to the chest in the bazaar. Okay. All right. Well, all in all, I mean, it sounds pretty good. The, um, now the, the champions... Uh, overhaul section uh, we'll probably do that on a different video and the reason is is because before the the patch came out I recorded a video for each champion and showing each of their skills and so now what I would like to do is do a side-by-side -side on each champion and each of their skills to show what the wording differences are for each one so but that'll come in a different video maybe in the next couple days. So, 
But other than that, guys, uh, that's pretty much patch 2.0. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this new patch other than other than all the bugs I mean <laughs> they're still they're still sending updates saying that uh, they're fixing bugs uh, and things so just let me know in the comments what you think about the good stuff is uh, let's try to be positive I know there's not a lot about this game to be positive about these days but we're gonna try to be positive about the about this patch other than the the crappy bugs that always seem to happen when they do when they put in a new patch um, but let's move forward and let's have fun see you guys next time